the media is finally picking up on this and talking a lot more about it, trying to figure out what it means. And um, we've been saying for, for some time that it means that growth and or inflation are going to disappoint on the low side of expectations uh, within the next year. Uh, and uh, I think that the Fed is not paying too much attention to this because it is to this indicator because it's looking at uh, backward looking indicators. So employment and the headline measures of inflation, not the leading indicators. Uh, so the leading indicators of inflation are pointing down uh, to deflation actually. In a recent talk at ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, the founder and CEO of the investment management firm ARK Invest, reiterated her optimism over Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Notwithstanding some recent losses of the larger crypto ecosystem, such as the collapse of both FTX and Silvergate, Wood shared some insights into her investment approach and vision for the industry. She is still bullish, according to Wood. In this video, Wood discusses the general market outlook, fiscal and monetary policies, leading economic indicators, market signals, and the Fed's attempts to mess up everything. To hear what Kathy has to say, let's now watch the video. The increase in spending is $2 trillion over 10 years. Uh, I know that uh, the Republicans want uh, a cut in spending over 10 years, so right there, there's a big gulf. Uh, there are three areas, though, that uh, the Biden administration uh, is willing to cut spending. Uh, the first is the Small Business Administration. Well, uh, small businesses are the biggest job generators. And I think I read somewhere in, in mulling over this budget that uh, one of the reasons to this is they want to stop uh, employment or slow it down so that the Fed will slow down. Uh, that's kind of interesting. The other interesting uh, spending cut is uh, Department of Transportation. I think I've read about five uh, train derailments in the last few weeks uh, and um, planes at airports uh, at risk of running into each other. Lots of reports of those. So I'm not sure that's the best uh, place to cut. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, there are a few cuts in the budget. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the negotiations go. Uh, these budget proposals are typically a no-go. They're going to change radically. But I did want to give you a sense of um, the massive tax increases across the board uh, that the Biden administration is proposing to close the budget deficit. Uh, and... Um, uh, for example, the um, the corporate tax going back from 21 percent to 28 percent, uh, uh, a tax on uh, on share buybacks of corporations going uh, from well they're saying one percent to four percent, so a fourfold increase there. Yeah, 40 percent increase, roughly 35, 40 percent increase in the corporate tax rate. But even taxes like the Medicare tax for for uh, individuals making more than four hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, they're proposing that that go from three point eight percent to five percent. Now, that sounds like kind of a small increase, but that's a 30 percent increase. And we have other examples of a doubling. Uh, the tax on uh, foreign earnings going from 10.5% uh, to 21%, that's a doubling. So uh, we have the tax on carried interest uh, once again showing up. Uh, that's nearly a doubling from 20 to 39.6. Uh, so a lot of tax increases, uh, including ones that we think would hurt capital formation, capital gains tax going from 20 to 39.6%, the dividend tax, 21 to 39.6%, uh, a net wealth tax uh, being initiated at 25% uh, for individuals making more than a million dollars. But we're beginning to see uh, brewing here a banking crisis. Uh, and the question we have to answer, is this going to become systemic like Lehman Brothers in 08 or 09? Or, and we're betting on this latter one here, 
is this more like 1994 when uh, Orange County went broke and that created a crisis to which the Fed responded? Uh, we think it's much more like 1994 because the setup was similar. Uh, in 93, 94, commodity prices had taken off as we were coming out of that uh, recession. It was an SNL induced recession, so housing. And, and uh, the Fed was railing against those price increases with higher interest rates. It was a terrible year for growth stocks. And that's how we would characterize uh, 2022. Um, but when Orange County went bust, uh, that was a sign that the Fed had gone too far and uh, the Fed did change its spots. We believe that the failure of uh, Silvergate Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, that, which just uh, uh, went, the FDIC put it into receivership today, uh, both of those are telling us a couple of things. One that, yeah, the Fed has gone uh, pretty far and is causing a lot of banks, not just these, um, um, difficulties. And I'll describe uh, how in a moment. Uh, so we do agree with those who say, well, Silvergate had a concentration of crypto clients, customers, and Silicon Valley Bank had a, a high concentration of venture and venture related uh, customers. Uh, and so that's all true. But if you look at what has happened here, it is the deposit outflows that have triggered the, the, the problem, the crisis. Uh, we know that venture capital um, has, is facing a bit of a liquidity squeeze uh, f fewer deals are being done. There is more risk aversion in the marketplace. And uh, so these companies are having to draw down their deposits. Uh, they mo most bank with Sil Silicon Valley Bank. They're drawing down their deposits because they have to. I think what we're seeing today is in some of these banks under collateralization. But in both cases, what, what do we have going on? These are centralized entities, uh, and they're not transparent. Certainly when it came to FTX, not at all transparent. Uh, centralized, opaque, completely opaque. The banks have to do more disclosure, so they're not as opaque. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you could see that they were upside down in terms of interest rates having to pay up for deposits, but earning a very low yield to which they committed at a bad time when interest rates were very low, thinking they were being smart. Um, and so this is nothing to do with crypto. In fact, Silicon Valley Bank, I mean, I don't think you're good to see a mention of uh, crypto at all there. Uh, so it has nothing to do with crypto, but it does have something to do with what happens during banking crisis. Usually these banks are upside down. They start losing deposits. Uh, in the case of Silvergate and uh, Silicon Valley Bank, there's a run on the bank. When you get Peter Thiel and other uh, famous investors and well-respected investors saying, get your money out of there, they're gonna take the money and run. And uh, so this is nothing to do with crypto. This has everything to do with Fed policy, we believe, uh, taking interest rates up so dramatically, uh, the most rapid rate in history, and taking money growth down from 27% two years ago to minus three. So that's a 30 percentage point swing that has never happened. We've gone back to the Great Depression to see if that was the case back then as well. It wasn't. With each passing day, there is more and more bad news about the economy, and the future's course is still unclear. What do you think about how the market is now doing? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable post alerts. Many thanks for tuning in.